What is up, guys? My name is Brad. I am the budding watch enthusiast here with you on Watch With Us. Today, I am reviewing the reissue of the Bulova Oceanographer, uh, a.k.a. the Bulova Devil Diver, a watch that I've long wanted to get my hands on since it debuted at Basel World, I think just a couple of years ago. And I'm really glad that I have gotten to get my hands on it, but not for the reasons that you might suspect. First of all, a big thanks to fellow Watch With Us collaborator Spanish Rob for loaning in his personal Bulova Oceanographer into me for the purposes of this review. So let's start with the thing that I really do like about the watch, and that is the dial and the bezel. Now, this is a very faithful, some might even say uh, to the detriment of the watch, of the original uh, Bulova Oceanographer snorkel design that came out back in the 1970s. You get that from the dial uh, all the way out to the bezel, to the cushion case that it comes on, and even right down to the bracelet. And for me, the dial is very much where it's at. Crosshairs on a dial, I think, is one of the most underutilized aesthetic on a dial, and I don't think every watch should do it, but the watches that do it uh, tend to pull it off really well. And the Oceanographer is no different here. I really like how it lines up with the, you know, that outer ring that the plastic uh, tube hour markers uh, sit at the very edge of. The minute track, you don't normally see push this close in on the dial, but again, on the oceanographer here, I think it really does work. I actually really even like the reverse Cyclops. If you guys follow my own channel, uh, you know that Cyclopses are not my favorite feature on a watch, but the reverse Cyclops here, uh, I don't mind. It's, it's, it's actually not quite as obtrusive as a Cyclops normally is, of course, because it's not sitting on top of the dial like a Cyclops normally would. Again, I think it's probably superfluous. You could probably read the date window just fine without the extra magnification, uh, but it, it doesn't bother me as much as most Cyclops complications typically do. The bezel complements the dial perfectly. I think upgrading to a sapphire insert uh, over the plastic insert that the original oceanographer had was absolutely the right call on this watch. Again, very cool little red contrast with the 15 minute uh, initial timer on here. Very satisfying click on the watch uh, with only a minimal amounts of back play on that bezel as well. Unidirectional, of course. And again, overall, I think the aesthetic of the watch is, is certainly its best feature, and it's the reason why a lot of watch enthusiasts do uh, strive for this one. And again, you gotta love uh, the 666-foot depth rating, uh, giving the Devil Diver its nickname. Now, of course, the, the only big miss, I think, on the watch is that applied bull of a logo. You don't really see it as much when the light's hitting it, but if you kind of move the light away, you can see those connectors uh, that connect some of the letters together. That just looks a little off-putting. Everyone that I've shown this watch to uh, since I've gotten it in, that's one of the first things they key in on. Uh, when they're looking at the dials, those little connectors, it just kind of looks sloppy. And if you look at the original, the original didn't have that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the original version of this watch uh, had all of the letters set on the watch uh, individually, or at least if they are on there, I don't see it uh, in pictures that I found online. So I wanted to talk about the dial first because that's the thing that I like the most about this watch. But everything else on this watch kind of falls short to me. The reason that I find the Oceanographer such a frustrating release is because this is a watch that ticks all of the bad boxes uh, that watch enthusiasts get frustrated by when it comes to watches from big companies that are made for the mass market. And it's especially frustrating because there is a limited edition version of this watch that is the enthusiast version, essentially, but it costs double the price. It starts with the cushion case. Now, I could be super critical of the fact that this watch is really, really polished, uh, which for a tool watch is not ideal. That's to be expected because they wanted to, again, remain faithful to the original oceanographer design. Again, you can even see how much the light is playing on here. It's a very, very heavily polished watch case. But what's frustrating is while they wanted to keep to the original design with the finishing on the watch case, I wish they had also stuck to the proportions of the original design as well. 
This watch is a beefy 44 by 46 millimeter watch case. Now, fortunately, some of that size is softened by the fact that this is kind of a cushion case, sort of a turtle case, if you will, that this watch comes in. So you're not gonna feel the full effect of the width of the watch as you might normally do on a case that you know pops out at the sides a little bit more. But again, the original version, the Oceanographer, was 41 by 43. Can you imagine how much nicer I think this watch would have looked if they had kept it to the original proportions? And again, the limited edition version absolutely does that. The other thing that kills me on this watch, look how tall this watch is, 15 millimeters in height. That is just a crazy amount of height. Now again, part of that comes from the crystal, Part of that you see that ring uh, below the bezel where it kind of comes up. I feel like there's a lot of unnecessary height there and they did it to keep in proportion with the rest of the case. But again, if they had stuck with that smaller proportion case, they could have lessened the height by a solid two millimeters. And I think a lot more people would have enjoyed that more. The other super frustrating part about this watch is the bracelet. Now the bracelet, again, you can see how loose it is. You can see how jangly it is. There's a lot of people that are gonna really like that because again, you're keeping with that vintage style aesthetic that this watch draws from. But if you're like me and you have a ton of hair on your wrists, all you know this bracelet is gonna do is pinch the hell out of your arm hair as it absolutely did with me. The other thing you guys may have noticed when I did the quick wrist shot there is that the bracelet was just a shade bit loose uh, on my wrist. And there's a very good reason for that because I couldn't adjust this bracelet. It was really difficult to tell whether the links on this watch are screw in or some kind of tension links. And because it's not my watch, I wasn't willing to be very rough and aggressive. I'll tell you this, if they are screw in links, they're screw in links that I don't have a screwdriver that's thin enough to get in there on. And if they are push links, uh, they're in there really tightly to the point where a push tool uh, was not able to get them out unless I really jammed in, which again, I'm not gonna do with Rob's watch. If I actually own this watch, I would probably have to take it to a watchmaker to get it sized. And for a watch enthusiast to me, it's kind of hits my pride. It's a little embarrassing, I think, uh, to have to do that. As far as the aesthetic of the bracelet itself, again, it's matching in theme with the rest of the watch. You have these very heavily polished outside links uh, contrasted very nicely with a brushed center link as well. Uh, as a basic flip lock deployant clasp uh, is very secure and will suit you very well with this watch. Now, of course, the biggest offender with this Bulova Oceanographer reissue, and a lot of you guys probably know it coming in, and I certainly did before I got it. And this was probably one of the biggest reasons that I didn't jump and buy this watch when it first became available, that's the movement that's inside of it. This ships with a Miyota 821D movement. Yes, you heard me right. A Miyota 8 series movement is inside this watch and not the more ubiquitously found, even in every micro brand out there, nine series movement. What does that mean? Well, it means that you get hand wind. It means that you're beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour, which you could argue is actually a plus because it'll be less wear and tear in the movement, but the watch doesn't hack. Now look, hacking on a watch, you can argue whether or not it's that useful of a feature. I would argue that it's a super useful feature, but here's the thing. Bulova is owned by Citizen. Citizen is the company that produces Miyota movements. There is absolutely no reason that in an $800 watch, which is what this watch is, that you're not at least gonna put a movement inside of it that micro brand watches that cost half the price will put in there all day, every day. When micro brand companies are able to put Miyota 9015s that not only feature hacking, but also have that higher beat rate as well, and Bulova and Citizen aren't willing to put it inside of their own watch that again, cost $800 to me is completely inexcusable. So I gotta say, even though I really do dig the aesthetic of the Oceanographer, I think it's a very, very cool design. Uh, for me, it's a miss because of all the other reasons that I laid out. I was actually really surprised at how disappointed I was in this watch. And for me, the reason that I'm glad I still got to get a hold of it is really made me appreciate micro brands that much more, uh, considering the amount of quality that a lot of micro brand watch companies are able to deliver in a package that costs less uh, than this oceanographer does. And again, it's doubly frustrating when there was a limited edition release of this watch that has a Salida movement inside of it that's actually proportioned more faithfully to the original oceanographer. 
That's the one that enthusiasts should buy. But then again, be prepared to shell out a considerable amount more money than this version of the oceanographer costs. I just wish Bulova had gone the extra mile with this one. And again, it's one of the things that can sometimes be frustrating when you're dealing with a watch that's designed for the mass market and not necessarily for the enthusiast community. So guys, thank you very much for watching my review of the Bulova Oceanographer reissue. If you guys like this video, click the thumb down below. If you loved it, make sure to click the red subscribe button here on Watch With Us, and also make sure you go to my channel, The Budding Watch Enthusiast, and subscribe there as well. You can find a link for that down in the description below. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time here on Watch With Us.